According to calculations by Malaysia's Employees Provident Fund, only 4% of Malaysians will be able to afford retirement. That's because by the end of 2022, almost half of the EPF members under the age of 55 had less than 10,000 ringgits in their accounts. Meanwhile, estimates show that members retiring in the next few years will need about 600,000 ringgits in order to have a decent retired life. In this video, we'll be looking at why is this such a huge problem in Malaysia? Is the government doing anything to fix this? And more importantly, what can Malaysians do to avoid this issue? But before I start, do join my Telegram chat group to discuss anything related to money or ask any questions that you may have. Alright, let's jump right in. So what's actually going on in Malaysia that's causing so many Malaysians to have a retirement crisis? First, many of Malaysia's EPF savings were wiped out during the pandemic. While the EPF was originally meant to be locked up and help prepare Malaysians for retirement needs, the government has allowed Malaysians to withdraw their EPF savings during their period to meet cash flow problems. Between 2020 and 2023, Malaysians were able to withdraw their EPF savings over four phases, with a whopping 145 billion ringgit being withdrawn from the EPF by 8.1 million members during the pandemic. As a result, the median savings of EPF accounts went from 16,600 ringgit in 2019 all the way down to 8,100 ringgit in 2022. Don't say retirement nah, 8,100 ringgit won't even last you more than six months if you have a family with kids. Ah. According to EPF, Malaysians need at least 240,000 ringgit by the time they retire. This will cover basic needs such as food and everyday costs. However, even this is barely enough because this doesn't factor in any healthcare costs, family expenses, and some basic leisure to enjoy a good retirement. If you add all that in, you will need at least 578,000 ringgit to safely cover your money expenses during retirement. Meanwhile, almost 6.7 million members or 51.5% of EPF members under the age of 55 have less than 10,000 ringgit in EPF accounts by the end of 2022. Which means that if you were to retire at 55 and live till 75, you will only have 42 ringgits to live on every month. While the retirement problem was made worse by the pandemic withdrawals, the fact is that this issue has been there all along. That's because most Malaysians are just making slightly more than what is needed to cover their expenses. As of March 2023, the median monthly income of Malaysians was reported to be 2,600 ringgits. Meanwhile, Bank Negara Malaysia estimates that if you are a single adult, you will need 2,700 ringgit to live on. Or if you are a couple with two children, you will need to sell a kidney, <laughs> I mean 6,500 ringgit to live on every month. But who are the Malaysians who may be facing this issue the most? If we look at the states, Sabah has the highest poverty rate of 19.7%, followed by Kelantan of 13.2% and Sarawak of 10.8%. This means for these three states, at least 1 in 10 households are earning below the poverty line of 2,589 ringgit a month. This is especially true for those who work in rural areas where the median pay is just 1,580 ringgit. Then you'll be like, oh, rural areas low pay is okay ma, cause their expenses are low also. Well, yes. But no. Back in the 2019 Household Expenditure Survey, it was found that household expenditures for rural areas were at 3,038 ringgit. That was almost five years back. So by now, the expenses would have gone up a lot more. In fact, close to half of Malaysian workers are earning less than the poverty line in the first quarter of 2023. This is a huge issue because when you have a low pay, your contributions to EPF will be low. This means if you ever stop working and retire, your EPF savings will be barely enough to cover your retirement. Quick pause, Weibo has finally launched SGS Trading. And this means you are now able to use Weibo to invest in SGS stocks, REITs, DLCs, and ETFs. On top of that, new users will get to enjoy commission-free trades for SG stock trading for 3 years. Although, you will still have to pay the platform fee. But even without the fee waiver, Weibo charges a very low pricing of just 0.05% of the total trade amount, with a minimum of $1.60. Besides that, Weibo supports odd lot orders for eligible SGX stocks. This means you can trade with as little as 1 share instead of the usual 100 shares. This makes investing in SGX stocks a lot more accessible to us. While waiting to invest your money, Weibo lets you earn a yield on your either SGD funds thereby optimizing the utility of your idle cash. Right now, Weibo is running a very generous sign-up promotion. If you sign up using my link down below, 
make an initial deposit of 500 US dollars or more into your account, you will first get 5 free shares worth 10 US dollars to 500 US dollars each. Then, if you complete 5 buy trades of US stocks and ETFs with each buy trade worth 100 US dollars or more or options within 30 days of funding your account, you will get 30 trading vouchers worth 450 US dollars in total. Weibo has also upsized their money book promotion where if you are able to activate and subscribe at least 250,000 US dollars to Weibo, fulfill the requirements and maintain the funds for one year, you will get to earn 5,000 US dollars worth of free Nvidia shares. Lastly, there's a new transfer promo from which you could possibly get up to 3,000 US dollars worth of free Nvidia shares by fulfilling the requirements. So if you are interested in trying out Weibo, do sign up to them using my link down below. With that being said, let's get back to the video. Another reason why Malaysians are unable to retire is because quite a handful of them do not have high paying jobs. In fact, it was found that about one third of graduates end up in mid skilled and low skilled jobs. Semi skilled workers have a median pay of 1,817 ringgit, while low skilled workers have an even lower median pay of 1,635 ringgit, all of which would be hardly enough to cover their monthly expenses. And the harsh truth is that it is not that these workers lack skills, but as Malaysia's deputy minister puts it, this is a salary issue where Malaysians are generally paid less as compared to other countries like Singapore. As a result, many Malaysians have moved elsewhere to seek better job opportunities. But perhaps this issue of not having enough to retire also has something to do with the financial literacy of Malaysians themselves. According to a 2023 report on financial literacy by Ringgit Plus, a whopping 55% of Malaysians say that they spend equal or more than they earn each month. It was also reported that 71% of Malaysians save less than 500 ringgit per month, while 67% of people share that they can survive for less than 3 months with their own savings without changing their lifestyles. Some reasons for the low savings are low wages and higher inflation, but another key reason is that Malaysians are spending more on holidays or other leisure expenses after the pandemic. It is because they feel that they saved during the pandemic and now it is fine to spend this year rather than save. This is called revenge spending. And according to the Statistics Department's Income, Expenditure, Poverty and Inequality 2022 report, it was also found that Malaysians are spending 2.4% more on staycations and eating out at restaurants in 2022 as compared to 2019. Because of all these reasons, a financial analyst also foresees that with depleting cash reserves and decline in income amid an impending recession, a rising number of Malaysians will be filing for bankruptcy in the coming year. So what is the Malaysian government doing to solve the retirement issue in Malaysia. First, the minimum monthly wage was raised to 1,500 ringgit in May 2022, up from the previous 1,200 ringgit. The government is also introducing a progressive wage model, which will start in June 2024. Under this scheme, employers would gradually increase pay for their workers based on skills experience and performance. This will not only help employers attract talents but also ensures that the workers are paid fairly and sufficiently. Besides that, the Malaysian government has also allocated a budget to help solve poverty in the country, such as the Urban Community Economic Empowerment Program, the People's Wellbeing Development Scheme for Rural Residents and Orang Asli Economic Development Program targeted to help the poor within the country. However, with that being said, instead of just relying on the government to help you out, it is important that we take steps to solve these problems by ourselves. You want the government to solve all your problems? Ah? You wait long long. Ah. So here are some things that you can do. First, don't spend all your money. Lah, adui. Use the 50, 30, 20 budgeting rule where you only spend 50% of your salary on needs, 30% on wants, and save the remaining 20%. These savings will not only give you the freedom to do what you want in life, it will also give you greater security when times are tough. But also, don't just let your savings lie there doing nothing like a lazy bum bum. Put your money in high interest savings accounts where you can earn anywhere between 2% all the way to 6% interest. Second, with the ringgit continuously going down and down and down against other currencies like SGD or USD, you can consider converting your ringgit into some of these currencies. That's because not only you will get to keep the purchasing power of your money, you will also be able to get some decent returns on your money. For example, SGD money market funds are now giving a 3.9% 7 day yield, while USD money market funds are giving a 5.4% 7 day yield. Third, by topping up more money into your EPF, you will get to enjoy a tax relief of up to 7,000 ringgit. As a bonus, your EPF money is earning some incredible dividends every year, which will further help to secure your retirement. Fourth, 
Invest any money that you do not need within the next 10 years. It can be in something as simple as the S&P 500 index, which has given a historical average of 10% over the long term. By investing your money, not only you will get to beat inflation, you will also get to grow your money a lot faster. Fifth, learn new skills to advance your career. For this, you can check out online course providers such as Udemy and Coursera, which are becoming more and more popular as they are offering a large variety of courses. And it's not some random courses yeah. Some of them partner with the top universities such as Cambridge and Stanford, as well as leading industry partners such as Google and IBM to offer these courses. And the best part, some of these courses are totally free to take. Finally, look for online jobs on freelance websites such as Upwork or Fiverr. These jobs can be doing stuff such as video editing, translator, and mean work, and so on. The huge benefit of working online jobs is that you will be paid according to the online market rate, which is oftentimes a lot higher than the rates that you get in Malaysia. In short, with a rising cost of living and an uncertain economy, it can be difficult for Malaysians to save for retirement. However, with the right mentality and some discipline, I do think that it is highly possible for Malaysians to not only save up enough for retirement, but also come out ahead from all of this. Anyway, that's all for this video. Hopefully, you found this useful. Like, share, and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.